Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Green Lady Cemetery, also known as the Seventh Day Baptist Cemetery. Don't forget to smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my episodes. So, to those of you who don't know, we're going to be talking about the Green Lady of Burlington, Connecticut. And I'm going to be explaining to you the story, the scary, eerie story about the Green Lady and its or her origin. The Seventh Day Baptist Cemetery is commonly referred to as the Burlington Cemetery and more recently nicknamed the Green Lady Cemetery because of its history. After to moving to Connecticut from Rhode Island, a church was built by the Sabbatarians, and they began burying people there since 1780. However, it did not become the official cemetery until 1796. Today, there is not much left of the cemetery due to vandalism. Many tombstones have been destroyed and others outright taken. In April 1800, Benjamin Palmiter, a nearby resident, went into town to get some supplies when a severe snowstorm hit the area unexpectedly. When he did not return when expected, his wife, Elizabeth, went out into the storm looking for him. She became lost and confused in the blinding snow and wandered into a swamp where she became trapped in the muck and froze to death. Her husband returned the next day and went out looking for her and found her frozen body. She was wearing one of her favorite green dresses. She was buried in the Seventh-day Baptist Cemetery. There are some who believe that Benjamin Palmiter actually murdered Elizabeth and gave the story as a cover-up since it seems so unbelievable. Others say he was with her and purposely watched her drown in the swamp. Some say that the Sabbatarians were not welcome in the area by the locals. Fatal accidents begin happening to many of them. While these may have been strictly coincidental or not, eventually it drove the Baptists to leave for Brookfield, New York in 1820. Whatever may be the case, when Elizabeth died, she was not settled and did not rest in peace. Over the years, many have seen a green fog in the cemetery and surrounding area. They say it then sometimes forms into the apparition of a woman wearing a green dress surrounded by a green misty aura which wanders around aimlessly. Then as quickly as she is materialized, the mist dissipates and she is no longer there. Many thought she returned from the dead still looking for her lost husband. However, when Benjamin passed away, she continued to appear over a span of 30 years or more. There are those that have been seen lights or a lamp light moving through the woods near the area where Elizabeth died. Many believe that this is the spirit of Benjamin Palmiter searching for his long-lost wife through eternity. During the early 1900s, there were reports of satanic rituals being performed in the woods directly across the street from the cemetery. In 1996, two CCSU students stumbled across a giant stone altar in the woods that was approximately four feet tall and solid stone and approximately two by four inches across the top. In front of the altar were four rows of round decaying wooden benches that were rounded and built into the hill facing the altar. One of the students was injured tripping over the top bench as they went down the hill. After visiting the stone altar, the students reported hearing a cacophony of voices telling them to get out, get out, get out. 
They ran out of the woods and fled from the cemetery, vowing never to return. More recently, a paranormal researcher reported being tapped on the shoulder in December 2015 while searching for the altar in the woods, also reported hearing shriek noises. In 2016, tourists reported that they heard a loud hum come from the woods.